I'd like to welcome everyone to this morning's advanced training. Um, again, you know, Teresa's off, so uh, you know, I'm always more than welcome to fill in. And you know, based on what's happening, I thought we'd do um, this training. We actually did it in April of this year. And if you think about it, that's about five months ago. <laughs> so I can't believe it's been that long, but you know, this, I think this is a really important app just for information and, you know, feeling, um, you know, independent in trying to figure out, you know, things, whether it be a question you have or um, a certain um, topic you want to learn more about, you are able to learn about it with this app. So uh, it's been a while since I've done an advanced session, but uh, it's again, it's a pleasure to present for you all. Uh, just make sure your TVs and cell phones are silenced to the best of your ability. We, we really appreciate it. Um, we are going to have, you know, our lecture, our demonstration. And at the end, we're going to have our Q&A session. So make sure if you have a question, you tap on more and then raise hand if you have a question about anything that I went over. And of course, I have some questions at the end for you guys to discuss as well. Okay, but it's, we're going to have a lot of fun. And again, thank you all for getting on to today's session. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and read our disclaimer. The Wildtech DC Senior iPad program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance, virtual health, well-being information designed for educational purposes only. You shall not rely on the information in any applications or topics made by Wildtech, including but not limited to mobile and device applications and any social media pages maintained by Wildtech uh, DC Senior iPad program, its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatment, or legal advice. Thank you so much for letting me read the disclaimer. <laughs> um, if, you, if you put your questions in the chat, I may be able to answer them during the session, or you all just want to make sure that we get through um, all of the information, okay? <laughs> so again, today we're going to be learning about all about Wikipedia, um, it's, you know, what it is, the history of it, and you know, it's always good to get a background of what we're learning about, so that way you're more informed. Um, we're going to have our navigation, so we're going to um, navigate the Wikipedia app. And last but not least, again, like I said, we're going to have our overview and our discussion where uh, we learned how Wikipedia could improve uh, our and yours daily life. <laughs> so first, what is Wikipedia, right? Again, we got to start from square one to, you know, go to square two, right? <laughs> um, the Wikipedia is the free encyclopedia, um, online encyclopedia, I should add. You can explore your world, find a quick fact, or dive down a Wikipedia rabbit hole <laughs> with the iOS app. Um, there are over 40 million articles across nearly 300 languages. Um, there's an explore feed. So if like you use Facebook or any social media, you know, usually they have an explore feed where you can look at different articles. And in this case, you can discover the depths of Wikipedia if they recommended random and top articles. So you can literally explore some different topics. Um, there's a find and a search feature and where you can easily find what you're looking for by searching within articles. So you can quickly look for something. And Wikipedia was launched in January 2001 by co-founders Jimmy Wales and Larry Sanger. So it's over 22 and a half pretty much years old. <laughs> okay, so next we're gonna watch um, a video, just uh, again, a history of Wikipedia, where it came from, and of course, some fun facts as well. Okay, so let's see what the video has to say about Wikipedia. <laughs> We've all used Wikipedia, right? They are the world's biggest encyclopedia and it happens to be free. If you type almost anything into Google, it's going to be one of the top results. And you know what? More often than not, it turns out to be the result that I'm looking for. It may not be the most reliable source and they know it. There's even a Wikipedia page called Wikipedia is not a reliable
viable source. It's because it's run by volunteers, and generally anyone can edit the articles. It's right at the top. We usually spend all our time on the read tab, but then right next to it, there's the edit tab. On average, Wikipedia is being edited 1.8 times per second. If you're using the information for professional or academic purposes, you may want to double check it somewhere, or at least look through those references at the bottom, see what you can confirm. But hey, if it's for personal use, I don't think there's anything better. Nothing else that exists today even comes close to how extensive and convenient it is. They have over 6 million English articles, with about 600 new ones being added every day, in addition to the millions of articles in different languages. Mm, Almost so 40 cool. million registered users, they're always ranked near the top of Alexa's list of top websites. And the interesting thing about that is these massive websites like this are typically funded through advertising. Google, Facebook, YouTube, they all make money through the ads, but Wikipedia yeah. is completely <laughs> different. You have never seen an ad on Wikipedia, but you may have seen these notices asking you to donate. That's the difference. Wikipedia's revenue comes from donations. They're categorized as a non-profit, meaning they're legally not allowed to make any profits, and in return they don't pay any taxes either. I want to go a little deeper into their structure and their finances later in the video, but first I want to talk about how the world's largest encyclopedia came to be. The main person behind it is Jimmy Wales. He goes by mm -hmm. Jimmy in real life, but often by Jimbo online. I know that because he says it on his Wikipedia user page. I'll be calling him Jimmy. He's a smart guy who clearly knows about finance. I say that because he graduated from high school when he was 16 years old, went on to study finance in college, where he earned his bachelor's degree, master's degree, and was darn close to earning his doctorate before he quit school to become a futures and options trader, which proved to be a lucrative job. After a few years, in 1996, he had earned earned and saved enough money to follow his passion and start his own internet company. It wasn't Wikipedia, not yet. It took a few not steps yet. for him to get there. The first business was founded with two other people and it was called Bomis. I know it's pronounced Bomis because under their frequently asked questions, they tell me that Bomis rhymes with Thomas. Right above, does the world need Bomis? No, but here we are. <laughs> I never visited the site when it actually existed, but from what I can tell from looking back on it, I would describe it as a lot like Yahoo, but intentionally geared towards men. You know, it was one of these search portals where you click on the list of options, but it was weighted toward cars and sports and actually had a fair amount of adult-related content. Mm -hmm. It was known as the <laughs> Bombus Babe Report. I don't want to go any further into it, but it's said to have generated a fair amount of their revenue. Unlike Wikipedia, Bombus did make a profit. They sold ads and I believe made money from memberships at one point. In the year 2000, as part of Bombus, meaning it was funded with those profits, Jimmy Wales set out to start an online encyclopedia. I know, it really sounds like it would be Wikipedia at this point, but we're still not there yet. This one was called Newpedia, N-U, and it was a disaster. Not I have to think that the idea for starting an online encyclopedia was at least partially influenced by what was happening over at Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, just have you heard one year Britannica? earlier, they the had started their website, Britannica.com, <laughs> and it was a big deal. They were having trouble selling their physical encyclopedia, so this was their response. When it launched, the site was outrageously popular. I guess it even crashed a few times because there was too much traffic, so Britannica proved that there was a high demand for an online encyclopedia. There was even some statements put out by Newpedia saying that they envisioned themselves as one day being a bigger, better, more in-depth version of Britannica. I can tell you right now that they never even came close. Much like Wikipedia today, Newpedia was free and created by volunteers. The big difference was that Newpedia wanted to be a reliable source, so they were so much more strict when it came to what was published and who can publish it. The articles were all written by known authors with doctorate degrees in the fields related to their articles, and each article was peer-reviewed mm, in this lengthy seven-step process. If something was published on Newpedia, you could probably probably trust it to be true. The issue was that they were hardly publishing any articles. It's hard to get people this qualified to do all this for free, and their strict guidelines were preventing them from growing the encyclopedia. In their first year, over $250,000 was spent on their Newpedia project that produced a grand total of 12 articles. <laughs> Again, with the model they were using, wow. a quarter of a million dollars resulted in 12 articles. That's not what you want to see. 
maybe they were fantastic articles, but you simply have to put out more than 12 a year to get things going. The chief editor over at Newpedia was Lawrence Sanger, and it's said to have been his idea to utilize some wiki technology to just get some articles out there. Now, when I say wiki technology, I don't know the specifics of it, but it's essentially a website that can be edited by the users. Wikipedia has always utilized it, but they didn't create it. It goes all the way back to 1995, when a computer programmer, Ward Cunningham, created Wiki Wiki Web, which sounds like part of a Will Smith song, but it was actually created <laughs> as part of a forum for computer languages. Wiki is the Hawaiian word for quick, so mm. that's where it all comes from. Wiki the point is, Newpedia was moving that? too slow, and they used this existing technology to create a separate complement website that could hopefully get filled much quicker. The new website was, of course, called Wikipedia. It was launched on January 15, 2001, now known as Wikipedia Day, and it did what it set out to do. They wanted more articles, and they got them. By the end of their first year, there were around 20,000 of them. Their size and availability, and a dedicated owner helped them grow at an exponential rate. Let's what face it, Wikipedia was making no Newpedia images. look bad. Jimmy Wales and everyone else knew where the real potential was, so by 2003, they gave up on Newpedia and made Wikipedia their core focus. By the way, at that point, Wikipedia had something like 100,000 articles, and Newpedia had grown to 24. It turns out, those 12 articles in their first year was by far their best year. I don't mean to put it down so much, but that was an outrageously slow pace. So at this point, Jimmy Wales had a popular website, but it wasn't making any money. It's estimated that he had to spend around $500,000 just to keep everything running. Mm. Again, that's not what you want to see. Wikipedia that's has crazy. always been such a communal effort, so in 2003, he decided that it should operate as a non-profit by establishing Wikimedia as a non-profit foundation, essentially funded by the users. And it's not just Wikipedia either. Under Wikimedia, we have Wiki Voyage, Wiki News, Wiki Data, Wiktionary, but Wikipedia is by far the most significant. They started with just one employee and have since built up to a few hundred, which I would still consider very lean for a company with their reach. And that number is so low because the employees are involved in management and behind the scenes activities, they don't create the articles. Again, that's done by the volunteers. The idea to make this video about Wikipedia was submitted through my website and attached to the idea, they say, Wikipedia is always asking for donations. How are they able to stay afloat? Who is bailing them out? Also, where does <laughs> right, the, where money, does the go? money go? When or if they get any profits? Those are some good questions, and I imagine many people have them because 97 people voted for this idea. So for how they're able to stay afloat and who is bailing them out, I wouldn't call it bailing them out. It's a non-profit. Almost all their money comes from those donations. They have a large user base with a lot of people who believe in it, so they've always been able to get enough donations to keep things running. They say that the vast majority of their revenue comes from individuals donating small amounts of money, so when they do those fundraisers, they've been effective. And then the question of where does the money go if they get any profits? Well, they legally can't earn any profits, but I will talk about what happens if they bring in more money than they spend, because that has happened every year of their existence. Here's how it all works. Nonprofit accounting is different from what you typically see. Instead of profits or retained earnings, their equivalent is called net assets. Just think of that as an accumulation of all the profits they've earned mm -hmm. since the very beginning. So, Looking back at their first year, 2004, their revenue was $80,000 while their expenses <laughs> were only $23,000, meaning they had $57,000 in profits, or in this case, a $57,000 increase in net assets. That $57,000 just kind of sits there in their bank account or gets invested, but it doesn't leave the company. Now in their second year, their revenue was $379,000 with mm. expenses of $178,000, which is actually a difference of $201,000. Here, their increase in net assets was actually $211,000. The extra $10,000 comes from changes in restricted net assets, which do not worry about. I took them away from this chart to simplify things, and they're not too impactful overall. All these numbers are completely accurate. These net asset numbers are just being affected by something else that's not shown in the chart. So then the increase of $211,000 is then added to the $57,000 from the first year, and it now totals $268,000 in net assets. Yeah, to get the point, it, when they right? have money left over, it essentially goes into their savings. So if there ever comes a time when their expenses 
businesses exceed their revenue, they can draw from it to make up the difference. It can sound like they're just piling up money, but I think it's a legitimate concern. They're counting on thousands of people being generous each year. There's no reoccurring subscription revenue or anything like that, so it can be unpredictable, and it's smart to be prepared. Every number that I've been discussing has grown every year, to a point where in 2019, they were up to 120 million in revenue, 91 million in expenses, and had accumulated a whopping 165 million dollars in net assets. So even if the unthinkable happens for them, and donations completely dry up, they'll be able to operate for maybe a year and a half. But keep in mind, they can't access all of it right away. They have 61 million of that invested. I also want to mention the program expense ratio, because it's always a key number for nonprofits. It shows what percentage of their total expenses were actual program expenses. You know, doing what they set out to do, as opposed to the money that they spend on administration or fundraising. In this case, the program is Wikipedia and all those other wiki sites. Of the $91 million, $68 million of it was spent on the program, which is 75%. You can debate on what the ideal number is. I know you want to see that high, but if you cut too many corners, it can hurt the business. But that's what it is for Wikimedia, and it's been all around that over the years. I hope that gave you a good idea of how it all works and what's been going on with them financially. Let me know in the comments, are you an avid Wikipedia user? Like I said, if you just want to look up something quick and be fairly confident with the answer, I don't think there's anything better. It's now the largest reference site, and it's just impressive to see what it's grown into. It's had some unexpected beginnings, and has formed as <laughs> more of an afterthought component of something else that failed, by the way. I think knowing all that makes it even more impressive. Also, I'm curious, are you one of the people that does donate to Wikipedia, and what are your arguments for or against it? And any other thoughts you have about Wikipedia, Wikime- <laughs> cool history right so again that's a little bit of how wikipedia came to be and how it began um i also um, oops yeah i have this quote here from um, mark barnacle that i found that i found quite interesting so i'm going to go ahead and read it to you all and have one or two of you share your thoughts so again he was an american journalist as you can see he was on uh he is an was an MSNBC contributor, and this is what he had to say. We have more tools at hand, literally, to make life easier and more productive than ever. We have Google, Wikipedia, iPads, iPhones, the App Store, YouTube, Netflix, and 600 cable channels. <laughs> we can shop, pay bills, order food, and nearly get everything delivered, all of it with the touch of a finger, on a device in the palm of our hands. Hmm, powerful, right? So would anyone like to respond to this uh, quote? Uh, yes, I... this is Anne, uh, Mr. Uh -huh. Bell. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm quite su surprised at how fast it grew uh, into the millions like that just from zero uh, mm -hmm. Wikipedia and I've really never used wikipedia but maybe now well i don't probably won't won't contribute because i don't have it but i'll probably use wikipedia more since it's becoming clear now about what it really is so this is a a good training for me awesome thank you you'll you'll see what you'll see what you can do miss dan so okay. just just hold on okay. tight okay you can put your arm back Alex? Uh-huh. Um, next next up is Ms. Duckett. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ms. Duckett. I see every hand raised. Yes. Is is this Wikipedia that they're talking about, is this the same one that's on our Victor Reader stream? Um, what was that last few words you said, Ms. Duckett? The Wikipedia that he's talking about, is this the same Wikipedia that's on our Mm -hmm. uh, to read a stream. You, mm -hmm. you know, we have the Victor Reader stream, and there's uh, what we call Wik Wikipedia on it as well. Yeah, I mean, if it's you know, it's a it's a very distinct name. So if if you know, it's it's on many apps. It's on many. I mean, it's on many devices. It, um, all you know, it's a website, so it's very accessible. So if it's, you know, on any device, then it's, you know, available to use, okay? So, so it's 
So would it be on the computer as well? Oh yeah, computer again, phone, iPad, any 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 anywhere you can access the internet, you can access mm -hmm. Wikipedia. Okay. All right. Well, hold, Excuse hold me. And, and and you learn and you'll learn some more. Okay, Miss Duckett. Yes, yes, this is yes. Arthur. All right, um, Mr. Arthur, you got some hands. I yes. you got you to raise uh, your hand. Okay, so next. Okay. So um, yeah, you, again, um, make sure you raise your hand if you if you'd like to contribute. Um, well, before we move on to the next section, we have Miss Harris, um, Miss Yvonne. Go ahead and unmute. Okay. Um, I, what I was oh, going to say. Oh, um, Miss Smith. Uh, we have another Yvonne in the in the, in the okay. call. Sorry, Miss Yvonne Harris. Okay. All right. I'll 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 stand down for now. <laughs> you know what? My my name is Miss Butterfly. So maybe. I can put my name, Miss Butterfly, oh, to distinguish uh, us. Oh, to distinguish sorry. Well, us we, we gotta have your first and last name so we so we know who you well, are. Well, you can I put know. Yvonne Harris quote Miss Butterfly. Well, it, um, well, we're we're good well, to we're, know. We're, we're, we're gonna we're, we're gonna it. learn each other's names, okay? But yes, okay. Ms. Harris, what would you what would you like to say about the quote? My question is, how do I access Google and? With, uh, Wikipedia on my iPad. I can't find it on my iPad. So, um, Yvonne, so I, the next thing we're going to do is how to is learn how to do the navigation. So, um, these different things they can be accessed by different apps. So, um, I would I would just say uh, just hold on, take some notes, and that way they'll answer most of your questions. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, Miss Miss Smith, would you like to say something on this quote? And then we'll move on. Uh, yes, I, the Wikipedia is a contributory community site. So my myself, I haven't done it yet. I can put my biography up there and attach links to organizations that might be associated with my biography. And sometimes people uh, contest the information that's on Wikipedia. So it's like not made by, as we talked about, the Newpedia where they had scholars doing it it's it's really an encyclopedia like a learning we call it a learning communities so we can contribute things mm -hmm. there are people that you might feel as though they they haven't gotten their proper deal you can start a, a uh, start a biography of them or of a, of, of a particular item or whatever and i'm landing my plane <laughs> yes there is again wikipedia is is, is uh, all over the world people can contribute so um, that's why, you know, uh, those new articles are made at such a big pace, things of that nature. So, um, so yes, there are new articles being made every day and being edited and looked at. So you're, you're definitely right, okay? So thank you so much for sharing, Ms. Yvonne. And we can do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes, gotta be independent. Thank you. <laughs> um, so next up, um, just some fun facts about Wikipedia. Um, there are over 1.1 billion edits since uh, Wikipedia was launched. So a lot of people have had uh, put their contributions and edits, things of that nature in Wikipedia. So it's been uh, launched and opened many, many times. <laughs> there are over 4.3 billion words in all the pages across Wikipedia. So, so much knowledge, so much learning. And there are over 45 million registered users. So people who can actually, you know, edit and create articles. So that's a, that's a lot of people. <laughs> um, next up, again, we're gonna go into our app navigation. So learn how to get to the app, open it, and how to navigate, okay? So just for like all apps on your iPad, um, if you want to download an app, um, most of the time there is a like website equivalent. So if you just wanted to go to wikipedia.org on Safari, you can do that, you know, for anything like google.com, wikipedia.com. But if there's an app for it, there's usually more features and it's usually, um, you know, it's easier to navigate than on the website because you're going to be looking through the website's view. The app's view is much um, simpler to navigate. So what you want to do is on your iPad is go to the App Store. So that's um, most of the time it's going to be on the first screen of your iPad, or you can search for it in the various manners and such. 
So um, just make sure you guys get to the app store. Once you're there, this is where you download different apps. And if you want to search for the Wikipedia app or whatever app you want to download, you tap on the search button at the bottom right, okay? When you do that at the top, you'll see the search bar where then you can type in again, the name of the app that you would like to download. So I just uh, typed in Wikipedia and it's right here at the top right hand corner, the Wikipedia app. Once you tap on it, it uh, shows you the different statistics on the app. So you just can see this is a very, very popular app. Again, it's, uh, you know, Wikipedia has been in existence since 2001. So I'll, many people take advantage of it. Um, so uh, on my end, you see it says open, but that's because I already have the Wikipedia app. But if you did not have it before, it would say get. You would want to tap on get and make sure you follow the prompts on the screen. You may need to enter in your Apple ID password to, you know, download the app. Um, otherwise, you know, if you would just, you know, someone else had your device, they would just be able to get, get, get all different apps. But you probably need to input your Apple ID password. But once you enter that in, it downloads and it's on now going to be available on your home screen. And this section will say open. So once you hit open, that opens the Wikipedia app. Um, after the first time you open it, this is what your home screen will look like. But when you first open the Wikipedia app, it will look like this. Okay, this is going to be your start screen. Again, if this is your first time opening the Wikipedia app. Um, it will say the three encyclopedias written by volunteers, more than 40 million articles in over 300 languages. So make sure you see at the bottom, it says next, or you can even swipe on the screen and go to the next prompt. So the second prompt will show, you know, the new ways to, to explore. So any updates that happen to the app, you'll see them when you open them. Again, you just hit next. You can decide what language you want, because um, again, not everyone's a English speaker either, Spanish, all different languages. So you can input the language that you would like to use when you're using Wikipedia. And then make sure again, you follow all the prompts on the screen. So, um, and then once you do, you hit get started. And then this is again, what your home screen will look like. Um, you see there's a search bar at the top and there's gonna be the navigation bar here at the bottom. So explore, places, saved, history, and search, okay? So you use that navigation bar to navigate between the different sections of Wikipedia. Um, the initial one that you'll see on your screen is again, the explore button or again, the home screen. Um, it shows you uh, recommended and featured articles, um, a picture of the day, different current events, so again, different, different topics that you may have not chosen, but you may be interested in. So again, if I go to the Wikipedia app on my iPad, again, this is the Explore page. Um, today, the featured article is a song by Taylor Swift. <laughs> the top reads in Wikipedia. So the 2023 Asian Cup Cricket Tournament is pretty popular now. Um, you see what happened on this day, the picture of the day. So there's a cool frog right here. Um, currently, it's vulnerable on the IUCN red list. That's a cool picture, a random article on the left. So anything, top reads. So it's cool. And you see what the um, each day from um, earlier. So you see this is the ninth, the eighth. If I keep going down, I can be, view all of the Explore articles from days before. So you just swipe up and down and you find something that you may want to read about. So again, let me go back to this frog, right? If I tap on the frog, again, it just opens the picture up, golden-eyed tree frog, Costa Rica. Then if I hit this little eye right here, I can then go to the actual image of that. And maybe save it, maybe I want to use it as a, as a background. That would be pretty cool, right? I can just hold it and then hit save to photos, just like we did with our virtual backgrounds. So that, that's a cool feature that you can do. But again, this is the explore page. So pretty simple when you first get on. Um, the next one after that is the places button. So you can find articles about places next door. So next to you in your location 
or even across the globe. And it has a map and location-based search experience, okay? So again, when you open this section for the first time, make sure you enable your location. So that way you can actually see what's around you. And once you do, this is kind of like what it will look like. So um, you see it's DC or on the downtown area and it shows you the different um, articles that are available for a certain location. So like the Kennedy Memorial Stadium um, and Institute, different things that are in that area that are of significance, okay? So if I go to the Wikipedia app again and hit places, I can then yeah, move my map around. So again, if I go again to downtown, look, different icons pop up. So if I go down here to Southwest, let me see what this one is right here. If I tap on it, okay, that's the Federal Aviation Administration. That's pretty cool. Uh, next over, um, the U.S. Department of Energy. If I move my finger over, let me go more downtown. What's this? Uh, the United States Mint. Yeah, I've passed by that building before on H and 9th Street Northwest. <laughs> um, if I go down, let's see. Hmm, results in this area. Let me tap on that. Okay, yep, yeah, there's the chair right here. It's, it's officially southeast in that area. Right here is the Frederick Douglass National Historic Site, right here on W Street and 14th. And again, all these different results pop up here on this list. So let me uh, go back to the National Historic Site. If I tap on it, it takes me straight to the Wikipedia article um, for that site. So yeah, located at 1411 W Street, Southeast and Anacostia. And this an article tells you a lot of different information. We'll go into what you can do within an article in a second. But yeah, this is the places button. So you can, search anywhere. So let's, last time, let's go uptown. Let's go to Petworth. Let me hit results in this area. And again, all these little dots are of significance. So let me see which one right here. That is Brightwood Park. Yeah, between Kennedy and Longfellow. <laughs> uh, up here on next to Peabody Street, this is Fort View Apartments. Uh, it's a historic place in D.C. Uh, right next to it on Quackenbosch Street is the Battle of Fort Stevens. So that actually happened again right here on Georgia Avenue. So again, it's really cool what you can learn about your surrounding area. So again, that is the Places button in the Wikipedia app. The next one is the Saved button. So you can view all of your save articles and organize your lists. Um, I'll show you guys how to do that in a second. And then there's the history button. So there's an actual, you can look at the history of the articles that you have recently read in that section. So if I go back to the Wikipedia app and I hit saved, um, again, before when we did the training at first, we have saved these two articles that we looked at. And then you're also able to create a reading list with the saved articles that you have. I, you know, it's up to you if you want, if you'd like to do that. But all of your saved and important articles here, right here in the save section. The history section, um, again, it tells you the history of the different articles you've read. So again, you see the last time that we did it was in April. So we looked at these articles in April and we just looked at the Frederick Douglass article today. So it's quite cool. You can look at the different things that you have looked at in the past. Again, this is this, what saved looks like. So when you don't have any saved pages, it will say no saved pages yet. And again, if, it, if, you ha if it's your first time you haven't opened an article yet, it says no history in that section too. Okay, last but not least is the search button. So the last button in that navigation bar, you can explore different topics of interest through keywords, dates, people, and places. And uh, you can, again, search any, literally anything. Wow. <laughs> Whatever you wanna learn about, Wikipedia probably has an article on it. So um, when you go to the search um, button, you see the search bar comes up at the top. It even shows you your recent searches on your iPad and you can um, search for whatever you'd like. So in this example that I, I 
chose to wrote iPad in there. And you see all of the different uh, relevant articles according to Wikipedia based on that. And it just shows you different results that you can, um, that you can tap on, okay? So if I go to the search button right here, and again, you see we searched these different articles before. Um, let's say we wanted to study for the nutrition trivia bowl, right? So <laughs> let me, uh, just as an example, let me type in food for, you know, literally food. If you just want to literally know the basics of what food is, you can type in food and tap on it and it actually takes you to the article on food. <laughs> you can learn what it is, what, what it, you know, if you really want to go to the basics, because there's always a deeper level than, you know, than you think, right? <laughs> so if I, same thing, if I wanted to go to, um, to nutrients, I can, uh, or nutrition, or I can even make it more specific, uh, human nutrition. There you go. And it's a provision that um, you know, talks about what the different essential nutrients are. So as, as you can see, there are, um, you can go way deep the rabbit hole in Wikipedia and search for things as specific um, as you would like. If you wanted to, you know, like vitamin C, let's say I wanted to learn more about vitamin C or A, B12. You see, if I just even type in vitamin, it pops up. So cool, what is B12? It even shows you the chemical structure of it. Um, and different information like quick facts. Um, so you can learn more about vitamins, mineral, any, anything on Wikipedia. That's just one small example. <laughs> um, this is what, again, you're at your, the article. When you're in one, this is what your screen will look like approximately. Okay, so this is what you'll see when you're inside of an article. And when you're inside of an article, as you can see, there is its own navigation bar at the bottom. And that's uh, how you're going to affect things in that Wikipedia article. The first one, so again, we're just, it's right here at the bottom of the screen. And I have the, uh, what each button does in the middle. So the first one is the contents. You can view the table of contents for the article. So again, we're at this vitamin B12 article, right, you all? And the first button at the bottom is the uh, table of contents. So look, I can look at the definition, vitamin B12 deficiency, and even different things regarding that, medical uses, and uh, sources of B12, drug interactions, chemistry. So there's a lot about B12 that she can, that she can learn. So look, society and culture. Um, says in the 70s, John Myers, a physician, developed a product of injecting vitamins and minerals intravenously for various medical conditions. So what, what are the effects of this vitamin on society? That's pretty cool. Um, it also recommends different uh, other articles for you to read. So there's adeno, silocobelamine. So that, I guess that's another type of B12 vitamin, but just other recommended articles. They give you further reading. So some of the articles that they recommend that you read. Um, there's the references right here. So if you were writing something like professionally, or you know, when I was in school, I couldn't use Wikipedia as a resource or a source. And when I cited it, because again, it's it can be um, edited by anyone. What I would recommend, if you wanted, you know, more of the scholarly information, is to look at these references. And again, you see there are different articles from different um, magazines, scientific journals etc. There's also different external links about the article and there's even more, read more sections. So within this whole article there's a lot of different resources and information available. So make sure you take advantage of this table of contents on the side here. You can either tap and open it and tap and close it to um, easily navigate that article. Okay. The second button right here at the bottom when you're inside of an article is the language button. You can change what language the article is in. The third button is the save button right here. So you can save the article to the save section and add it to a reading list if desired. So again, if I go back to the article page, you see right here at the bottom, 
I can tap on the language button and change the language. So if I want, wanted to read it in Spanish, I would, I would tap on Spanish or any other language or search for the language at the top. If I hit this third button right here, that is the save button. So look, when I hit the save button, it's saved because it's, uh, it's darkened now. And it says, do I want to add it to a reading list? No, you don't have to, only if you would like to. But that's a really easy way to save the article for later use. Um, the next button is the good old share button that's across many different apps and across your iPad, where you can share the article through um, iMessage or mail or open the article in Safari, different options that you can do with the share button. Um, you can even change the appearance. You can edit text size. Let's say you wanted it bigger, you can change that. You can change the brightness and even night mode controls. And last but not least, you can find or search um, exactly what you're looking for by hitting that button and searching within articles, okay? So again, the share button right here in the article at the bottom, you can share it with your friends, you can share it through mail, um, you can save it in your notes, you can copy the link, you can open it in Safari, et cetera. So let's say again, if I wanted to share this article with, uh, with a colleague, I would tap on the mail button and there's the link to the article right there. So they're able to open it very easily. So that's how you can share the article through mail or even open in Safari or copy the link. The fifth button right here is the text size button. So you can make it bigger. You see, if I swipe the little button, I can either make it bigger or I can make it smaller. I can even change the brightness. So you guys can see it on your end, but on, uh, yeah, but I'm, I can either make it darker or lighter within the Wikipedia app. Last but not least, look, I can change um, the night mode. So I'm night, what I recommend you guys do is you don't have your screens all the way up in brightness. It's really not good for your eyes. Um, white light, keeps you awake, the darker colors or more muted colors, they help you fall asleep. So when, when people say you don't use your phone right before you go to bed because that light um, in your eyes is telling your brain that, hey, it's still like daytime, right? So make sure that you use night mode controls um, at night. So like I can make it as dark or lighter, lighter dark, or I can make it um, kind of a tan color. And during the day, I can make it white because white is, uh, during the day, it's, uh, you know, it's the most seamless. But at night, make sure you guys use the dark mode feature. <laughs> last but not least is that find and search button. So the last button right here at the navigation bar, let's say I wanted to look for something in particular. So I'm at this article. I only have a few minutes or so. I want to look at the chemistry of this, uh, of this thing. So if I hit the find and search right here, and I type in chemistry, even just chem is, and then I can go through the different results with the up and down arrow button right here. But look, chemistry, I'm at the chemistry section. So um, again, vitamin B12 is the most chemically complex of all the vitamins. It's based on the foreign ring. Mm. I remember I was in a, um, that was my uh, major in college <laughs> at one point. So. At one point, I was able to understand what this uh, image right here on the screen meant. But look, if I, if I needed that information, I could just look at the structure and bam, because I use the find and the search feature in the article. Let's say, let's go to another article. Again, let's do iPad again. So iPad, let me type in ours that we have. So the ninth generation. And again, you can learn more about the iPad. Timeline reception, quick facts. And let's say I wanted to look at the, um, what operating system was on here at, at the time. So our operating systems are iPad OS. And look, I, right here, when I type that in, the original operating system that was on the iPad was the iPad OS 15. The current one is 16.6.1, yeah, which just released about a week ago. So make sure you guys update your iPads. I'll be doing that shortly, that session shortly, but um, that's a really cool way to find and search different information. Um, really 
quickly at a glance through the different options that are available within the um, like the home screen and these different buttons right here at the bottom. Or if you're looking within an article, you have these options at the bottom as well to search for uh, different things. Okay. So um, now we're gonna have our overview and our discussion. So I have some questions for you all, but please ask me any questions if you want me to go over anything. Um, that is the time we have about 15 or so minutes to um, just discuss and learn more, okay? So again, I have some questions for you all. So one, um, if you do have a question, I'd also love if you could answer one of these or one or more. What is one new fact that you learned today? Um, have you used Wikipedia before? And if yes, how? Um, what are you interested in learning about on Wikipedia? Like what topics do you like to learn more about? Or how can the Wikipedia app improve <clears throat> your daily life. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the hands first, so make sure you raise your hand if you have a question or you'd like to answer one of these, and then I uh, will go from there. So first up is Brenda. Hey, Brenda, how's it going? Hey, Alex. Um, Alex, I have used Wikipedia before many, many times on my desktop, mm -hmm. so I've, you know, I've looked up information, you know, just researching information. Um, I, I have a question regarding, and I've already installed it on my, uh, my tablet. Well, my mm -hmm. iPad, I have a tablet mm -hmm. too, but I've already installed it. So, and you know what, when I was doing it on my desktop, I didn't see all of those features that you pointed yeah. out, like search mm -hmm. and all of that stuff. So I, I'm, I know how to do that. But my question is, um, and it says that um, with Wikipedia, you you put information in. So I'd like to know if you have to be a registered user to do that and that makes donations and how do they check for accuracy of the information that you're putting in? Uh, so okay, great, that, that's, no, that's a really great question. So. Um, for the editing part, yes, you have to be a registered user to edit okay. and um, yep, and edit to edit different articles. Um, and for the other question, um, they, how do they check for accuracy? Right. Well, that's again, that's what they do on a daily basis. As they, as you heard there, they have like new articles like every second. There are so many edits per second. So. Okay. Um, things, you know, are not self-sufficient, but, you know, those, you know, everyone's looking at, you know, some people are looking at the same article or different articles, you know, but that's why they have the sources, you know, so don't take the information for granted in the article. That's why it's really right. important to look at right. those references and those sources. If you're, again, you're doing a scholarly, um, like, article, if you're writing something up, you know, so um, that's, uh, it's just that everyone needs a basis. And just by using the Wikipedia app, as you can see, you can search for anything. And it anything, has right. every, yeah. everything, everything yeah. and anything. And yes, this is different from the desktop version or the computer version, because on the website, right. yes. like if I, if I go to um, Wikipedia, yeah, .org, this is what it looks like on the desktop. Right, that's, so, right. that's yeah, what I yeah. But as you can see, it's a lot easier to navigate on the app because there's a lot less buttons. So it's it's a little easier to navigate. Of course, when I'm on my laptop, if I need to, if I just want to look up something, I you know go here. But if I'm on my iPad, I use the app because again, you see it looks much nicer and there are different features that are available. Um, they are yeah. available somewhat the same on Safari, but you know, Safari is a is a you know, it has its own methods and processes, right? So yeah. I can, you know, when I'm on Safari and I'm on Wikipedia, I can use the, I, there is the find and search, but it's in the address bar. So if I wanted to search for uh, 2023, when I type it in the search bar, usually we've been using it to search items or go to websites. If I close the keyboard and go down here, look, I, it says on this page, find 2023, and right. then I tap on it. And that's how I can do the find here. But it's a lot more apparent when you're in an article on the iPad, and you can just hit the find and search button. So, okay, there are there are um, different methods based on what app or uh, what um, what device you're using. 
Right. And you know, another thing, Alex, when I was in school, you know, I remember the people used to come to the door selling the encyclopedias. Uh, they yeah. did uh, the Botanica. They did the yes. World Book. I think I had the World Book uh, uh, collection. So, mm -hmm. you know, when Wikipedia came along, that was great because you could just put in whatever you're looking for and it'll bring up information. So I, I use it quite a bit. I, I like w Wikipedia. I like Wikipedia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, th thank you so much, Brenda. Let us know if you need anything else, and uh, okay. share and share. And uh, thank you for sharing. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, next up is Miss uh, Yvonne Smith. Go ahead and unmute. Uh, love to answer any questions or one of the ones that you see on the screen. You you answered uh, one of them. I use Wikipedia quite a lot, and I started using Chat GPT. And uh, what I use Wikipedia for, I have checked out what the world thinks about my community. Like I'll put in Washington Highlands or whatever. You'll be surprised. They mm -hmm. have articles. They have articles about individual communities in Washington D.C. And also, I don't know. I came in a little late. I don't know if you mentioned, but they have books too on Wikipedia. Yeah, different. There, it's it's been in existence for so long. Yeah, they. I mean, not Wikipedia itself, but the different wiki, different um things that they have available. They have, so they have they have universities. I hope that one of the topics that we have in the future might be about uh, free university classes that might be available because, like, I've got classes on uh, the MOU or whatever they call it, and. Harvard has classes that you can take online for free, but I, I use it a lot. I, I will always put up there uh, when, I'm, when I get something, I'll search it. But I know that I have to go down to the source because it's contributory and I, yes. have, corrected, and I have corrected some stuff. So I'm landing my plane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank, thank you for sharing and for using it. I, I used it quite a bit when I was in, in school just to get a basis, right? And, I looked at those sources and then got that information from there because that's, you know, um, we always we got to start from somewhere. So uh, it's really good that it's really accessible to a lot of people as long as you have um, a device that you can connect to the I didn't know that the app, too, right? it seems like the app works better than the site, but I've always used the site, but I'm going to yeah. try the app now. Each of them have its own advantages. It just depends on what you got. So, you know, you, you use what you got and you, you keep it pushing, you know? <laughs> so, um, but, but let us know if you need anything else. And thank you for sharing, Ms. Yvonne. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I see a question in the chat. Um, how do I become a member? Um, what do you click on a put or change information? So good. <laughs> good question. So. Um, in order to um, uh, make an account um, on the Explore page, again, thank you for asking the question. See, I, I don't um, think of everything to add on. You hit the settings button right here at the top right. So again, when you're in the Wikipedia app, you hit the settings icon and you see it says log in. That's where you're gonna um, register um, and, and hit join Wikipedia. You probably enter your email, you create a password. Um, things of that nature. And that's how you can create your Wikipedia account and adjust <clears throat> any other settings that you see on the screen. Um, if I go to an, so that answers the first question, I hope. And then the second one is how to edit or change the information. Um, what I see when I'm in an article, you see on the right hand side, um, you see there are little pencil icons, right? So for the reception for the ninth generation mm -hmm. iPad, if I hit yes, this, yes. Pencil, if I hit this pencil icon, look, this is what um, you see when you um, try to edit it. So it says, "Be bold, but not reckless, and updated articles do not agonize over making mistakes. Every past version of a page is saved, so mistakes can be easily corrected by our community." By starting, I promise not to misuse this feature. Yeah, because, you know, in the past, people have done jokes and have, like, edited things to a, you know, satirical degree. So that, that's why they're saying that. Um, write in an impartial tone, cite reliable sources. Yeah, so you got to do your research before you um, put that information, right? Which, which makes sense. <laughs> um, set knowledge free in order to give everyone's access to the world's knowledge. 
we need you to participate in its creation by reading, editing, and contributing to the topics that matter most to you. So it looks like I don't even need an account to register. I think there are additional features that come with being a registered user. I think, I don't know, you're able to do more. I'm not sure, I didn't get a chance to look that up, but look, um, even as a non-registered user, I can even edit articles from there. So um, it's pretty cool. Make sure you use the pencil feature. And if I have time, I can see if I can look at what you can do when you are a registered user. So. Um, I hope that it answered those questions. <laughs> um, <clears throat> next up is Anne Combs. Hi, Anne. How's it going? Hi, uh, Alex. I'm okay. Um, I just wanted to say, well, my questions were answered actually during the question and answering um, part of this, but I just wanted to say that I've never used Wikipedia, I don't think. No, I know I haven't, and I, because I always depend on Safari or Google, but this seems to be more, more informative, the, the Wikipedia, like it gives you more information on whatever you're searching. So this is really a really good learning experience for me because I never used it. So thank you very much for, uh, you know, doing this. It's really helpful. Oh, no problem, Anne. And, and yes, in some ways, you know, um, you know, just put it in your repertoire, you know, um, I still, um, it just depends on what you're doing, right? So if I'm already mm -hmm. in Safari, and if I want to search something, I mean, what it does, it does take you to different articles. And I would use, you know, it if you're um, just wanting not more solid information, but I would maybe start off with Wikipedia as, a, you know, the start. Or you can do Google. It's whatever you like to do. I think that's the great thing with the technology. It doesn't really matter what order you want, but it's just to know um, sometimes like uh, which one to use versus the other. You know what I'm saying? So okay. um, I think the good thing about Wikipedia does, it makes it um, some of the language is more accessible, right? Because it's not written by, you know, PhDs and those scholarly folks, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it has accessible language for you to, most likely understand the gist of what they were saying. Because even though we were on um, an article talking about, uh, you know, B12 and, you know, with the chemistry portion, you know, it says a uh, water soluble vitamin involved in metabolism, one of the eight B vitamins required by mm -hmm. animals uses cofactor. So it, it, even if you don't understand a term like cofactor, like what is cofactor? You see, I can just tap on it. And look, a cofactor is a non-protein chemical compound or metallic ion that is required for an enzyme's role as a catalyst. And sometimes they even put the definition of the word inside of the article as well. So um, I think uh, just whatever you prefer, whatever, um, you know, whatever floats your boat <laughs> and how you want to search, but it's available. Thank you. No problem, Ms. Ann. Let us know if you need anything else, okay? Okay, we'll do. All right. Um, next up is Ms. Sheila. Go ahead and unmute Sheila. Oh, hi, Alex. How Hello. you doing today? Good. How, how are you? Uh, I guess I'm okay. Um, uh, well, you know, glad, when mm -hmm. Wikipedia first came out, mm -hmm. I had heard that it couldn't be trusted. You know? <laughs> but now looking at this and everything is 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 very informative. Is you would say that it was more informative than the Encyclopedia Britannica? So um that's a, that's a good question because they did make that uh, they did mention that in the video. So again, Wikipedia it's um, well first it's an online except Encyclopedia you know versus the you know the ones that you know from before they were all paper right. So, you are I think, well, one with those, you know, again, Britannica, you know, those things were like reviewed, et cetera, blah, 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 right? You know, it, it's made sure that it's true to the best of the ability. Um, but be once it's published, you know, it can't be changed unless a, like a new book comes out, right? That's, that's why they have different editions of the right. book. So the good thing with the Wikipedia is because it's online, it can be accessed 24 hours, okay. uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year at all, all times you know there because across the world we're in different time zones right like in the in the east or east of us right now you know 
in Asia in those countries, right? It's it's nighttime yeah. right now. <laughs> so yeah, right. the advantage yeah, the advantage of it is any it can be edited <clears throat> at any time. Um, sometimes when things happen, you know, when uh, celebrities pass away, you know, it only takes like, I swear, like a minute or two minutes or so for right. <laughs> it to be updated. And sometimes I it gets that gets it. updated before the news articles get released because you know, when once something comes out, you know, with the this day and age of the internet, especially if it's someone really, you know, uh, famous, for example, you know, it gets spread very easily. So. These, you know, again, if you want to quickly look at something yeah. um, and just, you know, that's yeah. what Wikipedia is there is for, just for a basic, quick look at whatever you want to learn more about. Oh, okay. I mm-hmm. learned that they would get something like that out real quick you know, when a person dies like that. Yes. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, but for a new invention. Oh, yeah, no problem, Ms. Sheila. And they said they couldn't be trusted but because they didn't, they said that because they didn't know really what was going on. Because yeah. it's it's not it can't be trusted, but it's the fact that you you have to be not worried, but you just have to you know look at the again those sources that they cite and look at that information, and that way yes, that way you can get the whole picture instead of a uh, three quarters of the picture, Part right? Of, but yeah, right. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Oh no problem. You too. Thanks for coming on. And uh, I look forward to one thirty, you all, for our iPad trivia. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so uh, thanks again, Sheila. Let us know if you need anything else. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, next up is Anne Dennis. Go ahead and unmute. Uh, I tried using it. Well, I did use it during the, um, uh, for the, uh, uh, the trivia on the Washington, D.C., and found out some little facts that I, I was aware of, but not quite sure of. And um, I did find a discrepancy in a date, but uh, I went back and researched it. And um, I found out that the date they were getting about the cherry trees were uh, the date that they planted them, not the date that they were given in, in several places. So, um, I was, because uh, a, a, I knew when that was, and I had never heard of the other day. But anyhow, uh, I thank you for all the good stuff that you bring us. And uh, uh, I, nope. <laughs> I, I, I'm enjoying a, a lot of the word games that um, they, they keep advertising that uh, when we are uh, seniors, we keep our brains operating better mm-hmm. with them. So... Thank you, Alex. And you know I love yeah. you. <laughs> oh no, no problem, Anne. And and yeah, it's just it's just a stepping stool. It's uh, you know, again, basic information, but it's always good to double check. Like again, when you look at different points of view and different sources, you can look at the nuances and maybe how they explain certain things, and then that way you can then decide as an individual how you want to interpret. Um, that situation or or that uh, or that prompt, you know, <laughs> right? And they so, and they uh, do, they are pretty close to uh, uh, facts. They just say it a little different way, but they are pretty very close to facts in the encyclopedia. Because when I was doing some research on bread, um, I've got uh, that the 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 material on Wikipedia. I'm sorry, Wiki, Wikipedia. Um, mm-hmm is uh is right on time <laughs> and sometimes it's a little advanced so and uh so that, and then i learned that 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 has a site just like everything else and um i didn't realize that i thought you had to google it i didn't no, know that, i didn't know that it was a, a app oh yeah yeah it's it, there's <laughs> always a website you know safari that's that's why uh, again i love technology because there are different ways to do the same thing but in sometimes very minute different fashions and so it's just how you um it's mainly appearance um but it's also you know when with the ipad they understand the different limitations that, that are um on the ipad and what it can do so it really maximizes on the different like buttons and different um different options that you can do on here but yeah, I would, I would, um, yeah, Wikipedia is a start. And then if you want to go more in depth, 
besides, you know, if you didn't get a chance to look at the sources in the article, then I would Google it. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then that way you can view sometimes a little more advanced and more scholarly articles and stuff. And that way, that way you can get the right answer if it's if it's that type of situation. <laughs> one okay. um, one thing that I recommend, um, what I learned about is they also have something called um, simple Wikipedia, where mm -hmm. um, you know simple Wikipedia. So it has simple simple language um, versus sometimes you know the the language they use in the regular stuff. one. So. So mm -hmm. if I type in vitamin B12, um, you see it's a little different. It's called cold, you know, it has a key role, normal function of the brain, one of the AB vitamins, metabolic, you know, so when I read this, it's a little, you know, it's less info, of course, um, but it just maybe simplifies some of the language and you really get the gist of whatever topic that you put in. So and, um, it is a website, but um, but. Um, take advantage of whatever you like. I, you know, would look at the app first, you know, the Wikipedia app. And then if I didn't understand that, I would Google it or um, use that resource or, you know, the many, many other different search engines that are available. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Oh, no problem, Anne. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. I, I appreciate your participation. Yeah, my nurse came and interrupted you, but I made her sit here till you were almost finished. <laughs> oh no. Well, thank, well, thank you. Let us know if you need anything else, okay? Okay. <laughs> any um any other questions? Anyone oh. else would like to answer one of these questions? Alex, on the Alex I'd like to say something. Uh-huh. Um, first of all, I think textbooks are going to become obsolete because they're so expensive. <laughs> I yes, agree with uh, that. Oh, got an echo, Yvonne. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I'm getting that yeah, you're echo. On two, you're on two devices, Yvonne. So I am. Only, yeah, so that's that's why. So Okay. Well, what I let me let me I'm gonna get close one off. Yeah, get out of one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway, I was gonna say textbooks have become so expensive that um I'm sure student, there are some students who will have to resort to Wikipedia and the fact that uh, information in every, I put it in the chat, in every discipline changes so frequently that um, they will, uh, students will be using Wikipedia instead of purchasing these expensive textbooks. And I'm also trying to figure out why Google is being sued um, I don't know whether you want to comment on that. I guess it's, I think it's an antitrust suit being brought against Google. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but yeah, what, I, what I can say is to the textbooks thing, I remember being um, in college, Yvonne, and you know, when I had to pay for textbooks, um, yeah, they were, they were um, quite expensive. For some, yeah. uh, what I th I, th I think for that, um, I think renting is a great option. I I remember I had to rent a few textbooks when I was in uh, classes, and sometimes they were you know just twenty thirty dollars for the semester, so that was um pretty nice. But I I'll, I'll, I know a lot a lot of classes nowadays they do provide you know like material, some don't of course. So I think the importance of like scholarships and, you know, preparing beforehand, you know, for the, for our kids and our students and, you know, making sure that those things are set up if that's what they would like to do and their life is uh, really important. So I think online textbooks, you know, I may, I used a couple of online textbooks. I think those are going to be the norm eventually, because again, there's only so much paper, and uh, ink available <laughs> in this world, right? So I think right. we are becoming more of a digital age. So um, I, I, again, I use uh, Wikipedia quite a bit as a kid, not to source from, of course, but just to get the knowledge. So as you know, yeah. folks are more accustomed to technology, um, Wikipedia, Google, all of those um, different websites are just gonna be used by more and more people yeah. as we are able to advance society just a little bit um, each and every year, you know? So, yes. Well, Alex, have you been following the suit against Google and 
um, I no, I, I haven't. I haven't followed along. Uh, most, okay. you know, uh, a, a lot of people have a lot of things to say. So I think um, with that, Yvonne, I would say not um, to worry about it and such. But I, you know, if, if that's something that you're interested in, yes, then just keep up with it. But Google has provided a lot and uh, information and resources and stuff. And and I use it all my life, so it's uh, been a great resource. So I hope it's been a good one for you too. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very so, much, Alex. This was very helpful. I'll certainly be using Wikipedia for sure. Uh, no, no problem, Yvonne. You have a great rest of your day. <laughs> you as well. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um. Anybody else? would uh, like to share their response to the question um, that you see on the screen, one, one more response, and then we'll uh, have a break until our one thirty session. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Thank you all for getting on today. <laughs> You know, some people think, you know, it's Friday. Oh, Friday, Friday, but you know, you guys get on, you guys still learn. Uh, and then a lot of other folks. So I really got to give it to you for getting on these sessions and, and learning more. So um, thank you all for getting on today. This was very informative, Alex. Very informative. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Alex. Thank you. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Thank you.